Hey everyone, it's Matt from TechandWorship.com and today we're going to learn how to set up Ableton Live for our live worship settings. So what we want to do first is open up a new Ableton document and we will see an audio and a MIDI channel. Let's go ahead and click on MIDI and click delete and right click anywhere else and you should see insert audio track. So now what we want to do is uh, right click on the first audio track. Let's rename it click and let's right click the second audio track and rename it loop. Then what we're going to want to do is pan the click to the left and the loop to the right and how we do that is come over here and pan it to the left for the click and pan it to the right for the loop and what that does is allows us to send the left side click channel to the mixer and the right side loop channel to the mixer as two separate channels. Now what we want to do is find our files that we used last time. Uh, last time we showed how to take a multi-track and make it into a click track and a loop track mm -hmm. for this. So you'll see here we have a click track for cornerstone and a loop track for cornerstone. So I'm going to drag the click into the click channel and drag the loop into the loop channel. Now you will see we have two different channels here. If you click, double click on Cornerstone, you'll see that Warp is highlighted. We want to make sure that that is the case. And then also on the Loop channel, we want to make sure that Warp is highlighted as well. Let's click over to our click track real quick. And you'll notice down here at the BPMs, it says 142.99. You'll just click on that and type in 143 because we want to round up. And then here on the loop, you'll see that we have a bunch of different little yellow boxes. And on the click, we only have one. And that needs to be the case on all of our tracks. So let's click on over to the loop. And if you'll click a box and delete, it should go away. So let's do that to all of our boxes except for the first one over here. All right, now you see we only have one yellow box here. And let's click on that yellow box. And again, we want to make the BPM for this track 143 which is the same as the click. Now what we want to do is make sure that our click and our loop are synchronized with one another. You can zoom in by uh, left clicking and going downward. So you'll notice that we actually have some audio here before the clip starts. This is where the clip will start and this is the audio before. So what we want to do is come over and double click right there to make a new yellow box. You'll see it's right there. Then we can delete this old box right here. Now we'll take this box and move it right there. So we created a box right where the audio starts and moved it right where the audio clip will begin. So you can zoom back out, see that everything is there. So let's move over to our click track now. Let's zoom in to our click track. Again, you click this top part and just hold down and you'll see that there's some audio still there as well so if you double click where the audio starts right here we'll delete the old yellow box and then move it right where the clip will start so now let's check our BPMs we click the yellow box look at our BPMs 143 let's go back to the loop We click the yellow box 143 and that's where we want to be. Now when we play the clip, we want the master tempo to be 143. So what we're going to do is come over here to master. We're going to make it a little larger so y'all can see it. And if you will right click on this area, and you can click edit launch tempo, and you type in 143 and hit enter, it will set the master launch tempo to 143 BPM with our clips at 143 and our master at 143 when we play this clip you'll see that it is in time with each other which is what we want now I want to add some more clips because we're not going to just do one song so I will come to my folder where I have all my clips you can see I have a click and a loop for each of my tracks so let's say we want to do 10,000 reasons here's the click track for it I will drag it to the click and 10,000 reasons loop I will drag it over to the loop and now when I go to the click you'll see the yellow box 
and you'll see it's 145.01 we want to change that to 145 we'll come here remember we only want yellow one yellow box so now that we only have one yellow box let's hold in right here and drag down we'll zoom in so now let's move it out just a little bit and we can double click where the audio starts get rid of this yellow tag and then move it to the front of the clip so now we see that it is synchronized with where the clip starts now let's do that with our click as well we will go in remember to click and zoom in by going down we see some audio overhang here so we can double click where the audio starts get rid of that one bring it right there where the clip starts now let's make sure we're at 145 BPM let's go to our loop make sure it is at 145 BPM click enter and then let's go to our master track we will right click on 2 and click edit launch tempo and we will go to 145 BPM and now when we play we'll go over here and play the second track three four we will see that it is in sync so now i'm going to add just a couple more tracks and then come back and we'll talk about how to launch these tracks um, in a live worship setting all right so now i've got four tracks here cornerstone ten thousand reasons a mighty fortress is our god and all creation sing you can see i've done to these tracks what i did to the others so now let's say i'm playing guitar and i want to um, launch those tracks without having to bend down to my computer um, and do that whole mess so what i use um, is a midi foot controller and it's the Behringer FCB 1010. There are many other things like the um, Korg NanoPad, um, some other things that we have reviewed on TekkenWorship.com, but um, the, the MIDI foot controller um, by far is the easiest for guitar players or anybody that's using their hands in the middle of worship and they want to launch a new song. What we want to do is go to Live and Preferences we'll make sure we go to the MIDI sync tab and here you already see I have my USB MIDI interface set up make sure that your input and output is on for track and remote after that you can click out we'll go up here to this MIDI tab in the top right corner click it and you'll see everything gets highlighted in blue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top four of my buttons on my uh, MIDI foot controller and make them trigger off each audio clip. So this will be one, two, three, and four. And we want to make sure that we click the master because when you click this master, it's going to click off everything on this row. So the click and loop will be clicked off. So make sure that master one is highlighted. And I'll go ahead and click the first button. You'll see it assigns there. So for track two, I will click the second button for track three, the third, for track four, the fourth. Now I always want to make sure that you have a stop button. So here, click stop and assign one of your buttons to stop. If anything were to go wrong, you could always um, just stop in the middle of it if it just com went completely haywire. And now let's click this MIDI button again. You'll see everything goes back to normal. And when we click the first button, you see that it goes ahead and launches the first song. Now if we click stop, it will stop the song, just like magic. So the second button, three, four, stop, third button, stop, fourth button, stop. So now I want to show you something. Um, that may be detrimental to you. Um, let's say we want to go from the first song into our second song. Um, let's go ahead and launch the first song. Now we're going to go into the second one. Three, four. All right, let's stop. 
you'll notice whenever I click the second button, these started to blink. And what it did is it waited for the next bar to go into the next song. And if we want to change that, if say you wanted to make it to where when you click the button, you want it to immediately change to the next song. What we can do is go up here to where it says one bar and you can actually set it um, to what you want and if you want it to do it immediately you would click none and now if we click our first song now we click our second three four you can see that it immediately goes into the next song without any hesitation it won't wait for the next bar so again when you get ready to um, trigger off your songs with a MIDI controller make sure you go to preferences make sure that your MIDI controller is on input and output make sure these are on the track and the remote and then you'll go to the top right corner to MIDI click on each of these to assign the buttons click MIDI again and everything should Three, click off four. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at transitions. So say we want to go from one song into the next, but at the end of the song, we kind of want to, it to carry over into the next song. Um, so there's kind of an overlap of the ending of the first song and the beginning of the next song. I'll teach you how to do that in the next video. And also we'll look at how to change the keys for each song and how to change the volume and how to fade different parts of the song. Um, and I'll put a link here as soon as that's up and then go check out our last video of how to make multi tracks into two different um, click and loop files um, so you can get caught up. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.